Hey guys, what's up? I'm Casey with Honey Tree Farm, and this is my wife and I's farm. Uh, we run this uh, year round. We're in Catawba County, North Carolina, and we started this in September 2018. And at, and at first, Tori worked full time at her corporate job, and I started the farm. So like building the beds, I uh, got two tunnels up, you know, amending the soil, working the soil, all those things, finding. Uh, markets and restaurants and people that are interested in buying and things like that and then march 2020 uh right before the economy and stuff was shut down <laughs> um tori had quit and we started we started farming full-time together um and yeah now it works so we make enough money to pay our bills and expand our business and blah 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 all that stuff and i recorded all of last season 2020 uh with a video every week so Pretty much everything's in there. How we do everything is in there. But this video is gonna be all about the tools we use. So it's winter time and we have, kind of have extra time. So I'm gonna go through and show all the tools that we use. Uh, it's probably gonna take a while to show them. I think it's gonna be pretty valuable to people, especially people that wanna do this, or if you wanna take your gardening to the next level and grow all the food for your family. I think this will, I think it should really help. So what these tools are, where to buy them, and then, um, I have a video from the past year of us using them and yeah. So I'm gonna split it up into three different categories because there's a lot. And so I'm gonna put in like garden maintenance or like bed maintenance, um, things we use to build up the beds and the farm. And then things we use for growing. So the tunnels, the row cover, the hoops, and the weed mat is a pretty effective thing for growing. And then tools for harvesting and post harvest because the reality of doing this full time and we sell all year, half of our time is spent harvesting and selling it. So tools to help harvesting, uh, the wash station, so the salad spinner, the bubbler, uh, all that stuff and especially the cooler, I mean that's important. Yeah, I want this to be realistic to show, you know, these things that we use, especially with just us two doing uh, a lot of the work, we do have some help now as we've grown and they're awesome, they, they work really well. But before that, uh, the tools are really helpful for us to do a lot of work efficiently and, and yeah, make it happen. Okay guys, so this is how we do all the soil work and you know, sort of building beds, bed prep, um, flail mowing, cover crops. This is the BCS. So this is considered a two-wheel walking tractor. So you can get tons of different attachments for these. And there's like wood splitters, um, power harrows, which mix the soil this way, rotary plows, which bust the soil up. The flail mowers which mow this way and will cut even tall cover crops into like nothing. Snow blowers, um, like dozer blades, plows, uh, there's tons of stuff. So, so what I have on there now is the tiller and the PDR which is a precision depth roller and that allows you to take your tiller and we try and stay no-till as much as possible, but in most cases you need to do a little work, which, and if you run this over, it's the equivalent to raking. So you can set it at a half inch or an inch. We normally try to roll it a half inch when we're bed prepping, just to prep the seed bed nice. So that's this, and this, this is what allows you to adjust your height. This is the tiller. Um, yeah, I've used it in tons of previous videos. The BCS is really easy to operate to. It's really unique for different attachments for different attachments you can move the handlebars all the way around so like when you're mowing you would have the mower up front the handlebars in the back so we got lucky when we bought this thing we bought it from uh, extension agent and um, we got the BCS and th and and two attachments for 5,000 I think new they're like 7,000 with no attachments but to find one in the states because these are from italy uh yeah look up bcs dealers so that's bcs and yeah if you look at uh jm forte's book the market gardener that's pretty much he built his farm based off the of bcs yeah it works well for our context so i mean i use it pretty much every day another cool maintenance tool is this this is the 
flame leader. This is the flame leader. So this is a propane fed torch with a hood and the hood allows the flames to stay in this area and not go out and burn other crops. This one's from Neversink Tools and you've got this little baby propane tank that goes with it. Um, you can put it in a book bag. I just have it on an old bag from the military. It fits just fine. So you use this for, if anything's super weedy and we kind of need to reset the bed, we will use this to go through and burn the weeds. It's most effective when the weeds are small. And it basically boils the water in the cells and then they don't grow back. And the roots try, and the roots try to grow the plant back, but it's all damaged. So they use up all their energy and then the roots die too. There's also other growing techniques for that. Um, when you're growing carrots, so flame weeding um, a, a day before the carrot seeds germinate. But we do something different and I'll eventually get to that. So for weeding the beds and cultivating, a lot of the times we use the stirrup pose. This is for in the bed, in between the crops. Um, this is just from the local hardware store. This one is from Haas Tools. It's really nice and built much stronger than these other ones. And one thing I did to this thing is put a hook on the end. So if there's a smaller area that you need cultivated, this can fit in. Um, I have a video on making it. It's really self-explanatory though. Just bend the hook and drill a hole and put it in and clamp it to keep it there. But we definitely use these all the time. For the walkways and for bed flipping or cropping things out, this is a wheel hoe. Uh, this is from Haas Tools as well. And so it has the handles. And you just push it along in your beds. And uh, that's pretty self-explanatory too, but we use this all the time. At least every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And they have different attachments for this here. So I, you can do, this is considered their oscillating hoe attachment. And then there'll be another one where this is cut right here and this comes in this way, and this one comes in at a different angle. That one's called a sweep, and so um, we'll use that around the irrigation lines if we need to, and then there's another one with like a plow or like a hiller, and we use that for um, growing beets. They have other attachments too, but you can check it out on their website. There's a link in the description. Some of this may seem self-explanatory, trying to over-describe the tools that go into doing the work. So rakes, so raking soil, uh, raking compost, making sure you have a smooth bed, blah, 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 all that good stuff, building beds. Um, so these are other maintenance tools. This one is the Dura Rake from Haas Tools. Really sturdy handle. And this rake head right here is 30 inches. So that's the width of the bed. And um, one thing we're gonna be doing here soon is putting stuff over some of these and marking where we're planting. This is a spring rake. Uh, so the very, very final raking before you put the cedar on it. So you can see the difference between this bed and this one. Um, it's pretty wavy in this bed too. So what you wanna do for that is take the rake side this way and then back this way to fill in all those divot areas. And then you'll have spots that are still uneven so you, and you'll have extra too so you can whatever that's called, feathering it out. And then this spot, the back side of the rake, see how it comes through there? You can see that's a really smooth area to seed or plant or whatever, or raking out weeds, all that stuff. This is the rake we use for that. This is another spring rake where I cut the sides off right here. And the reason I cut those off is because this top right here is 18 inches, which fits in our walkways. And so if we're weeding or you run the wheel hoe through, you can take this and rake this, the walkway clean of debris because here the weeds will grow back because it rains so much. And 
leave a really clean look and it's really easy and really effective. This is just a smaller hard rake. Everybody's probably used one of these. Another maintenance tool or just a tool in general that might not seem real obvious is rope. Um, I used to be an arborist and a climber, so for rigging and things like that in trees. I use this to unload heavy, like, heavy bags of potting mix. Also use it to pull tarps, use it to tie things down. All right guys, I'm at Josh's place. We just loaded this up. And um, this is the chick chariot that Josh built. It holds like 100 chickens. Somewhere around 90, 100, something like that. Yeah, about yeah. 90. Yeah. I mean, it's just, this, I would probably, this is probably, as far as a farm use goes, this is probably just as viable as a five gallon bucket in my mind. Shovels are pretty self-explanatory, but I just want to bring up this one. This is a blue spade. Um, I spent a lot of years landscaping, like 10 years, working outside, um, you know, planting trees, planted like thousands of trees with shovels like this. And this is a blue spade from King of Spades. Super solid, it's 11 pounds. But when you're digging holes or cutting roots, if you need to, um, digging edges, this is just a really, really good shovel to have around and it lasts forever. So for moving tools around or seed flats or when we're harvesting, we're putting, filling this with totes full of produce. This is a garden cart. Uh, this, is from, this is from Northern Tool. And yeah, really effective. We use it all the time. Honey bee just landed on my hand. Um, so the last maintenance tool, um, we actually just bought this thing. This is a steel trimmer of uh, being an arborist before I prefer steel tools. So this thing has this deal here where you can change out these attachments. This is a brush blade. So we're currently working on a food forest. There's tons of brush in the bottom. There's tons of small trees. And so we've been going through recently and just cutting them with this. Um, we plan to fill it with edible plants, open up the canopies, all that stuff. Um, so that's been useful for that. I also think this will be useful when we're um, cropping out tomatoes. Just take this down the line, chop them at the base so you don't have to bend down and use hand pruners. Cucumbers, the same thing. Any stemmy plant, peppers, it should make it, it should make the job go way faster. We also have an edger. So the edger is just like this, but two of these instead of four. But you run it along the edge. So the edge of this plastic right here, this weed mat, um, we have Bermuda grass here. We're in the southeast, we're in North Carolina. And the Bermuda grass will grow all the way over that weed mat and grow into your beds and just take off. So I used a weed whacker last year, which took a lot of time and it's really annoying. It's not effective as the edger, so just the edger alone and the amount of time it saves justifies paying for this. That's one of the other things to think about with these tools is what you're gonna use and now, and then the other thing is your context. Like you might not need some of these because you might not be doing the same project so you might not or your farm overall is probably way different than ours and that's fine that's cool so the edger will make a bigger edge and really cut the Bermuda grass harder and just allow it to be easier to maintain and it also helps with uh, the landscaping around our house because we have customers that come here and buy food and perception is really really important and we don't want to look like slobs okay tools for growing so a lot of those maintenance tools we use to build the beds, maintain the beds, maintain the farm, uh, help with cropping out, help with establishing things to, to then plant. But then once you plant, aside from cultivating, there's not a whole lot you do except monitor the plant and maybe trellis and those things, but we're getting into that. So number one for me is the tunnels.
and there's a lot of hate on plastic and stuff and that's fine but we got 80 inches of rain this year and I don't know if anyone's tried to grow in a temperate rainforest but it's not easy and most likely you'll probably see a lot of farms in the southeast go to use a lot of tunnels and really horticulture essentially in my mind this is more horticulture than agriculture so um, because it's smaller we're maintaining gardens we're not maintaining like big fields with big machines this is it's really common in horticulture because you take a small amount of space that you want to maximize and create a microclimate and and grow the plant in that situation so the tunnels are from farmer's friend and this is a classic pro tunnel uh, we have eight of these and we're gonna buy some more uh, they're pretty easy to set up they give you really good instructions uh, this one this tunnel right here costs two thousand dollars and then the end walls cost us 60 bucks so really not that expensive for what you can grow in there we can put up one of those by ourselves in a day that's just Tori and I we can do it in one day number two on the effective tools for growing list is the cedar this is a jang cedar $400 I think um, it'll pay for itself in a bed of carrots like a lot of these tools will pay for themselves really quick if you're um, serious about growing your food or serious about building a farm business that makes money and so this thing has gears in here that you change and different rollers that fit different sizes of seeds and you change the gears for your spacing and change the rollers to fit your seeds and seed with it so so this gets used a lot and is easy to use uh, yeah we I mean we seeded a ton of stuff with it haven't had any issues yet so uh, this is another really effective tool this is a silage tarp this is also from farmers friend we use this to prep land um, to germinate seeds crops and cover crops um, if you have a bed that just goes terrible you put this on it in the summer and give it about a week and it, all the weeds will be dead and it will be clean and ready to seed again so very effective for not tilling very effective for saving water uh, I just made a video that explained more about how we use these um, it's the one about building a 6,000 square foot garden in January or something like that and yeah these are uh, yeah, it's plastic again, but but the benefits outweigh the fact that it's plastic and it's treated, it's used, it's already a product from a different farming practice, and it's just thanks to JM again, Fortier in Canada, um, this became a thing that he used to prep land. So he uses the prep land now; it's a thing, and like everybody uses them. It's really really effective, and not that expensive either. And they're uh, they're gonna they last for a long time. So you have the black side and the white side in the summer we'll take the white side in the summer we'll prep a bed seed it water it um, put the black side down the white side up and that will reflect the Sun off of it keep the soil at a cool pretty even temperature and we can germinate turnips you can germinate arugula in a day you can germinate radishes in a day you can germinate carrots in four or five days uh, we use it pretty much to germinate everything in the summer because it helps save water. Otherwise, you, like, especially carrots, you have to water and keep that moist all the time. And for the, and for the tarps, uh, if you all check out the old vlog videos, like you'll see we use them all the time. And we also let other people use them so that they don't have to buy them because sometimes when you have everything planted, you're not using them very often. And it just works out to help other people out. So this is the other tool uh, for growing that I use a lot. This is a backpack blower and so this is for foliar fertilizing uh, this is something that i've always done here and some people don't think it makes a difference that's fine i think it does make a difference and you can see it and all, and this is also used for like applying beneficial nematodes microbes in general um, endomycorrhizae things that will help the soil out and also i plan to use this to mist just water on crops in the summer to cool them down where we don't have to run the overhead on everything else so tools like this also help you as we uh, go into the third year of our business and 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 find out more of our crop plan and what people want and we can get more efficient and not just constantly getting screwing stuff up over here or over there again punch in the face here or punch in the face over there 
you have to do this, you have to do that. So this will help solve a lot of those issues along the way. So a lot of seaweed has been through this thing for nitrogen for the plants, um, all organic amendments. And it allows just me to do the entire farm in a decent amount of time. And we used to have a pump backpack sprayer before. And when it started taking a really long time to do everything, um, just, just the time it saved justified purchasing it, just like the other tools. Plus it's way more effective. Thank you.